This is the story of our 2020 Brooks Range, Alaska drop camp caribou hunt. I wanted to put this video together so that not only can our friends and family enjoy the video and memories with us forever, but so that people looking to do a hunt like this might be able to look to it for what exactly to expect when going on a trip like this. It can be a daunting task at first, but it's really not that bad. I hope you enjoy, and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Kind of give you a little bit of a tour of what it looks like anyhow of Kotzebue. There's like a restaurant and a store right here as far as food. And then come in. And then we just met Sue. She's super nice. Kind of shared a little main room here. There's Zach. And here's our little room for the night get all our gear set up um, getting ready to fly out in the morning which fly out about 11 o'clock tomorrow so this is our home for the night when we got to Kotzebue we made it to Sue's and got unpacked about noon and had the rest of the day until the next morning around 11 with really nothing to do most of the things were shut down in town and there truly wasn't much to do other than we went on a walk out to the um, take a look at the bay and kind of look around and read a little bit about the town. It's an interesting fishing town with some pretty cool history and definitely recommend taking a walk to stretch your legs and try to pass the time because when you're sitting in a hotel room for 24 hours with nothing to do, you can go pretty stir crazy. I made it down the coast in 17 hours. Picking me a bird dogwood flowers And I'm a hoping for Riley I can see my baby tonight So rock me mama like a wagon wheel rock. All right, so we just met with Sheila here and went over the map and where we're going to be headed and everything. So we're right down here in Kotzebue. And we're going to be headed probably up in this area maybe even up in this area here what happens is the migration comes from up here in the top and it used to come down and around and come into the bay down in here but this mine right here red dog mine um, is about 17 years old and there's a road here and it's haul trucks hauling um, what is it, zinc? Zinc. one of the largest zinc mines in the world and so when that went in and with the road and everything it's changed that migration from up and down around now it comes and they come through the mountains and come down and come through the mountains again to get down so it's totally changed in the last 20 years of the migration and so whereas 20 years ago you'd just be flying up into here and being in hundreds of thousands of caribou the whole migration's changed and now once they start coming they're going to feed down through these fingers and across. And so about 10,000 caribou have migrated so far as what they've seen. Um, north wind started yesterday and it's supposed to freeze tomorrow. Um, and it hasn't done that either of those, which are 
a big pusher of the caribou. So Sheila's thinking by second, third, fourth day, um, we might be seeing a large migration, the head of the main migration coming. So we're gonna cross our fingers, hope for some great weather and hope that the caribou start marching and we're looking at more than just a couple a day. Just landed on the float plane. Show you around here a little bit. Um, had a couple guys that rode with us that are getting dropped off first, so we're actually just kind of spinning the plane around here. We're gonna get out first here, so they tie us up. Forward. That's going to be their camp. And once we're done here, we'll uh, get back in and head over to wherever the next lake is that we're going to. So it'll be about seven miles away. So pretty excited. Alright, so we're kind of getting camp organized, not all the way there yet, but wanted to show you around. We're on Finnick Lake or Finiac Lake, however you say that. Got some uh, about four caribou spotted up there. Yeah, hard to see, but a bluff right, right up there. Saw two big, big caribou. We've been here half an hour or something. Got some water from the creek. Gonna make some food. We haven't eaten since uh, breakfast, since about six o'clock tonight. So just wanted to show the setup in these tents and they come with two cots here. Each tent has two cots. Um, there's just two of us here for this, but you can do up to four people in a camp. What comes with this when they drop camp it? Um, wanted to show this. We got onions, potatoes. Um, we brought those. So we brought, these are our own. We brought some tortillas. Um, but they provide, got some Kool-Aid mix, peanut butter jelly, bread, um, a whole bunch of mountain houses. I mean, they got the ice cream. Um, they got granola, apple crisp. You know, all sorts of stuff, spaghetti, bunch of stuff there. Bunch of top ramen, um, some fish fry, fruit snacks, some granola bars, um, peanut butter crackers, candy, dish stuff. Um, those are uh, garbage bags. Here's kind of the camp utensils. So some coffee cups, plates, oil, um, coffee pot, pots, pans, dishes. Um, fire starter, rope, twine. There's some tarps out back. They do have a first aid kit, coffee, all this stuff. 
paper towels, toilet paper, and they actually have quite a bit of seasoning, more than I thought we would. So that's what we got going. Um, tonight we're gonna do a little fishing. There's supposed to be some grayling and I believe lake trout in here. So we're gonna try for that. Got our tarps, stuff like that. So that's what it looks like here at camp. It is <laughs> just absolutely beautiful. We uh, love it here, caribou right off the bat, and we can't wait to uh, get going. We're gonna eat, probably do some fishing. We'll see, I mean, it's light till 10, 30, 11-ish. Uh, so we'll probably go on a short hike today. I mean, we're already seeing caribou. Might just like hike up top of this ridge here. It's not very far, just get a lay of the land a little bit, but man, what a, what an absolute dream. We spotted our first caribou of legal hunting day number one. Three and a half, close to four miles over there on that bank. So looks like two bulls there, long ways off, so pretty hard to tell, but you can see horns. So we're hoping they just feed right on this rim. That'll bring them right pretty much to camp. So we're gonna, good spot, Zach. Ready to eat us a little breakfast, it's almost ready. Our mountain house is cooking. Keep an eye on these guys, hope they're big and hope they keep feeding our way. See how it goes, pretty, pretty beautiful out here right now. While crossing the creek in our waders, we look up on the hill to see six caribou and what appear to be some good bulls headed right at us fast. We had to make a quick move and try to get in range. right now. Oh my god, he's huge harnish. Well, Zach, tell us what just happened. Well, we crossed the creek from camp, got, got up the other side, getting ready to take off our waders, and we look up and there's, I don't know, seven caribou coming 300 yards from camp. So we stripped down. Um, Got, got our gear on, headed up over the hill to try to cut them off. We got to the top of the hill, and uh, pretty soon there were horns, and um, knocked an arrow. Tried to stay as low as possible. This tussock's pretty tough walking. It's kind of an ankle breaker. Uh, got up there, a really good bull. Um, had double shovels on both sides, really good tops. Um, yeah. But not bad for the first 10 minutes of hunting on the first day. Got within 100 yards, 120 yards of a couple of really good bulls. So if this keeps up, it should be a really good week. And then we just walked all the way around. Came over to this rock outcropping. Zach's going to make up some hot cocoa. We're just kind of watching this way. Some of them, a couple groups have come around this way here. Um, we saw some back that way to the east of us. Um, they were headed southeast pretty fast. There's some clear across the lake that we had seen. We can't find them again. Um, this lake's about four miles across, so it's, it's a jaunt. Um, and then a bunch south of camp, but they're headed south and you can't walk them down. So slow going, make it about a mile an hour, um, walking through the tundra. We're up here, you can see we're up on this rock bench, um, trying to find these rock 
benches to walk a little bit, save our legs. There's some nasty stuff in some of that tundra that is no fun to walk in, so. Um, yeah, we'll just kind of hang out and see if we can't pick up a few more groups and make a move. We might, if we don't see anything, we might head back to camp and go the other direction or just kind of see how the day plays out. Well, hiked a couple extra miles to go look over a ridge behind me. Didn't see anything. Looked back toward camp and uh, almost same place. We got on some big bulls this morning. Some more big bulls. So we got a close to two mile hike. Um, we're beating feet trying to get over there through the tussocks as fast as we can. Pretty much everyone says you can't walk down a caribou once they're past you. Um, we're some dumb Wyoming elk hunters that uh, pride ourselves on being able to walk stuff down. So we're gonna put it to the test. We were gonna head back to camp anyway, so <clears throat> we got probably another mile here. We're just gonna keep beating feet and trying to catch those caribou. All the caribou we've seen for the most part really graze slow. Um, it's terrible walking in this tundra, but we feel like we might be able to walk them down. So we're gonna give it hell and let you know how it goes. While headed toward those caribou, we ran into a cow that broke off from the bunch and kind of meandered her way back toward us. So we decided to mess around with her a little bit and see how close we could get just to see how spooky these caribou are. And turns out they're really not nearly as spooky as the elk or deer that we're used to hunting. After that cow finally cleared, we tried to catch up to the rest of the herd, but when we got back to camp, we just could never get eyes on that big bull that we had picked up earlier. When we started taking all our gear apart and kind of started cooking dinner, I decided to go on another little walk and just get up on one more ridge and look, and lo and behold, I was able to pick up some antler tips of what I thought was probably that big bull. I ran back to camp, told Zach to grab our gear, and we took off once again around the lake for another mile and a half hike to try and get on this big bull. This would be a stock that haunts me for a long time. I went way too fast. I got overly excited and let my emotions get the best of me. I did not put together a good stock and just flat got busted. I thought the bull was facing the other direction because he was when I originally spotted him. And when I got closer, I never double checked. And as I popped up over the little rise, he was looking right at me and busted out. This is one that's going to hurt for a long time. caribou coming right at us. That's the one we're after right there. They're probably 1,800 yards out and we were sneaking on them but now they're kind of feeding right down the bank toward us so we might get up in these bushes right next to us and hunker down. And hunker down.
we can go through that time. Okay. He's there, he's there, he's there. You see it? No, no, no. Wake up to a cloudy day, dark rolls in and it starts to rain. Staring out to the cage like walls Time goes by and the shadows crawl Crushing candy, crushing pills Got no job, mom pays my bills Texting nexus, get my fills Sweating bullets, Netflix chills World's out there singing the blues Twenty more dead on the evening news Think to myself, really, what's the use? I'm just like you, I was born to lose Alright, Zach, what'd we do today? Well, we walked a long ways And, uh, saw very few caribou um, when we finally did see a couple caribou, they were like a mile and a half away. We were already like three and a half miles into our walk. Um, kind of looked like they were going to feed towards us. Um, and then they just really kind of started milling it. Looked, by the time we made it to the next ridge, it looked like they'd gotten further away. So we watched them for, I don't know, half hour. And then, uh, I told Tom, I was like, we should just go after him, make a move and see what happens. So we hit the shoreline, walked, I don't know, we probably walked the better part of a mile to them before they kind of came to, towards us. Um, snuck up there, used the shoreline, had a good little little uh, lip and uh, decent wind, so it concealed us pretty well. Um, snuck up to 90 yards. One of the bulls was really good. He had great tops, um, a shovel on one side, uh, but he wasn't huge. He'd have been good representation and I'd have been damn proud with my bow with him. Um, came to full draw. Once the little bull stepped in front of him at like, I don't know, probably 55, 60 yards. Um, um, put my pin right on him. Um, We've had a decent wind out of the north all day, down along the shore. It didn't feel like it was blowing that hard, but uh, apparently it was, because uh, first arrow, we didn't see the flight, and Tom saw that arrow fly in front of him, so the wind blew, was blowing my arrow roughly probably 18, 18, 20 inches to the left, and um, went up, found my arrows, no blood. Um, had a good opportunity, and I just didn't come through, but it's been, been a blast. Can't complain. They came towards camp. We thought, well, maybe we'd run into them on the way back to camp, but we've never seen them again, so. So, another long day. Day two was another 10 plus miles. That's why we're sitting here with our feet in the creek. I rolled my ankle pretty good, which if you know me, that probably doesn't su surprise you, so. We each had to go with really good bull and came away empty-handed with our bows on both of them so day three we're hoping we see more caribou we saw six cows and two bulls today that's not I mean and a wolf. we did see a wolf this morning and last night tried to get we went over to where that was and never came up with anything but we're gonna regroup get a new game plan and on the hill, there's four bulls feeding toward us. So they dropped down, we tried to get across, we went and grabbed our waders, tried to get across the river, but now we got pinned down. Our camp is literally right there. 
So we're gonna watch these bulls and hopefully they were coming right at us, but I don't know if they see us in the river or not, so hopefully they keep working this way. Status update day two, part two. I just did a video um, of us sitting in the creek with our feet in it, talking about our day and licking our wounds. And I look up on the hill right over there. There's four bulls walking to camp. Um, so I'm literally no shoes, no bows, no nothing, sitting in the creek trying to ice my feet and ankles. So we run to camp, get our bows, throw our waders on, I don't even have socks or anything on. Get caught in the middle of the river. They pin us down. I think they saw us. So I, I feel like they were gonna come across, but they caught us in the middle of the river. And uh, we were just worried if they crossed on this side, we'd never have a shot. So they started going up the hill and we made a bomber run up there in our waders and just couldn't quite get the gap closed so a little more excitement for the end of uh day two that's kind of a running theme here zach we uh think we're done for the day get yeah. to camp take all our crap off and then we find more bowls so we might have to rethink our strategy here on what we do at the end of the day we're thinking because that's like the third or fourth group that's tried to come across right at camp that tomorrow we might be at camp a little bit more instead of five, six, seven, eight miles the other direction. So a little bit of fun. A little bit windy, but there's some bulls. There's a couple more to the left. Look like some good bulls. Morning, day three, got out of camp or got out of bed, drinking some coffee and looked up and spotted bulls right on the horizon. So it looks like they're bedded. Let's see if we can see the other ones here. Couple more right there. So it looks like that middle bull for sure is a shooter. Hoping they stay bedded. Pull this off, we're just at camp here. We're gonna have to cross the river, go across. And they're just right there. Right about there. So a lot of times they're coming across a little draw right here and they go up the back side of this hill so we're gonna try and cut them off and get this thing done today.
87, 87. Nope, he's going down. He's going down, Zach. He's the third one. One in the middle? Yep, 97. So, uh, tell us what just happened, Zach. Well, Tom spotted five bulls bedded, I don't know, half mile from camp up on a ridge. We threw our gear on real quick. Um, snuck over here, used the, the shoreline of the lake once again to get close snuck up on this uh rocky point <clears throat> got up here and we could see and they were coming right at us um the smaller bull walked by us at 30 30 right yards 30 and then the other bulls kind of filed out a little bit further and uh i just got an arrow in a big bull shot was like 55 yards that's a big bull which you know most people told us to expect 100 yard shots plus with their bows and we just Frickin' put the sneak on these bad boys. He's, uh, he's bedded yeah, down. I about, might not be able to see him on the GoPro, but he's right. He's bedded down about 200 feet. Yeah, bedded down. down. Left, the others are still walking down the shoreline. Probably gonna walk through our camp, actually. So, but, I hope we're gonna get some eyes on him. And um, He's hit. We're gonna see where, we think it might be a touch back, but I think we're good. He didn't go very far bedded down. So, we'll get back to you, but Harness just got a pig. He's a big bull. Zachary Harnish is walking up on his bull. Dude, I can't believe this. This is, uh, this is a dream come true. Tom and I have been planning this hunt for two years now. And with all the COVID, we didn't honestly know if this thing was still going to happen. Flights changed three times. Dates changed. The date change probably worked to our favor because it's been unseasonably warm. We've had cold front come in. Tomorrow's supposed to be a high like 36, which is good, so that'll push the caribou. Um, this guy walked by us this morning, and we had five of them. The first one walked by about 30 yards, the next one walked by 55. He was the last bull in the group. The biggest bull, biggest tops. And, uh, quartering to him, he was playing the wind, ended up hitting gut, coming out liver on the opposite side, so we had to give him a little time. But here we are. Pick him up, let's see that. Let's see him. Look at that bull. Look at the tops on that thing. Great representation. I could not be happier. The velvet's still good, doesn't feel like the tips are slipping, so I might be able to save it. I'd like to get him European mounted with the velvet on. Send it off and freeze dry. We'll see what happens in travel. If not, I'll strip them. It's the old uh, PSE came through. First, first animal with this bow. I'm ecstatic. Yeah, buddy. Good work. Let's get some photos. Pretty people better move it on out of hand. Then a blue eyed cutie with a wiggly walk comes sliding up next to him. Come on, I can get some Laker fishing in today. Yeah. Day three, evening, like six.
6 30 7 o'clock something like that and we're <clears throat> up here in the little glassing fort somebody for us built this nice little sort of a windbreak up here gonna make some hot cocoa it's windy still pretty much all day every day 45 degrees out yeah it'd be 45 if it wasn't windy but it's pretty cold no caribou haven't seen any since this morning well we saw two cows i guess around noon come over the hill but haven't seen anything besides that pretty slow afternoon but last night at like nine o'clock some just came through so we brought enough water coffee hot chocolate and snacks to last it out up here for a while so we're just gonna enjoy the view and try to stay out of the wind as best we can and just scope it out see if we can turn any up not a bad view or not a bad not a bad way to spend the evening Go. Tom, what's going on? All right, so day three, we hiked Camp Sideway, we hiked east of camp. Look in this big valley, we did see some caribou. That's been the most consistent path, but they're four to five miles from camp. So there's a sow grizz walking on this ridge above us to the north this morning, but Harnish just looked up there and there's a, looks to be a good, at least mature bull. He's quite a ways away. So Headed toward the lake, back toward where they've all kind of been going by camp-ish. He's got a ways to go, but he's hoofing it, so we're going to take an angle, try to cut him off, and we got today and tomorrow, so uh, we're going to see if we can get an arrow in him. I'm still going with the bow and trying to get this thing done, so we'll see what happens. So there's a caribou that I'm probably going to have an opportunity at, a little bit younger bull. He's not huge, he's not terrible, and he's the only bull we've seen today. The only other caribou we saw were a few miles east of us, going the wrong direction. We didn't see really anything last night except a couple cows, so every day has been a few less. And this guy's feeding right toward us, so... Keep watching him here, he's... I don't know, half a mile from us right now. I'm gonna keep watching him and see what happens if we're able to get in on him with a bow i might take him i don't think i'm going to shoot him with a rifle today but we're just going to kind of see what happens
58, 55. Well, windy as hell. I don't know if you'll be able to hear me. It's morning day six. We're supposed to be getting picked up this morning. First morning that there isn't wind. Or, well, there's still wind, but manageable wind. But um, transporter texts us because all the wind the last few days are three days behind. So they're probably going to come get us tomorrow, it sounds like. Good and bad news. Um, so, looks like we might have another chance. Zach's on the spotter here. And we have up on the North Shore again. I don't know, there's what, 30 some, 40, 40 some, something. 40 some caribou coming our way. A couple bulls, mostly cows, but a couple bulls. So we're gonna try and make the best of a bad situation. We also woke up to, um, I, we don't know if it's a wolf or a wolverine. We're kind of leaning toward wolverine. It's real gravelly, so there's not much for tracks, but ate the rest of Zach's caribou meat of what was kind of left and then chewed on the head as well. So it's still intact, tore up the velvet, ate some of the base of the skull. Not awesome. Wish we could find it and shoot whatever the hell it was, but um, maybe we'll be able to salvage something out of this and get another bowl today. We'll kind of see what happens here. We'll definitely have the gun, but without the wind, I'll have my bow too, just in case the scenario presents itself. I'd still like to use my bow, but we're in the 11th hour now, so we'll have both and hopefully we'll be able to get in close and make something happen. Looks like they're really moving now that the wind's died down, so this is the most, I mean, it's three different groups. Um, that's the most we've seen migrating yet, so hopefully we can put this together and I cannot screw it up finally. So, great last update, but just got eyes on the herd there. It looks like they might have grouped up together. So we're at 40-ish caribou, maybe you can see all of them. Half a mile north of us, working back down toward the point where Zach shot his bull. So, making a move back down there. Wind is great right now if they keep angling the way they're angling. So, crossing our fingers, uh, we're just talking. It's Today's a gift. We shouldn't even be here. We should be leaving this morning, but transporters backed up with the weather great weather today so i'm going to try to uh capitalize on this i've had three excellent opportunities that i haven't been good on so i can't make sure we don't screw this one up After multiple failed attempts with my bow that I should have made good on, I finally busted out the rifle on what should be our last day to make sure we went home with some meat and I was able to harvest this young bull at 90 yards. After a short pack back to camp, we were able to dry out some gear and decided to spend the rest of the day fishing south of camp on the creek when we ran into this. I wouldn't say a giant track, but big enough to eat all of Zach's caribou. And us. Headed to camp. There's camp. It's probably what did it last night anyways, because this water receded today. So I came in last night, walked in the bank, haven't seen him.
All right, so we got a plan. So camp is right there. And where we were keeping our caribou meat before, so camp was just right over in those tall willows right there. Well, we had a bear come and visit and eat all of Zach's caribou. So we've come up with a new plan. We're about 20 yards away from the tent. Probably not as far as you would like to be, but what we've done, we got it all right here. We just stacked it up. It was all covered and shaded. I'll throw some branches back over it, but it's all, it's, it's cold here, so it's fine. It's pretty close to frozen. We rigged up our coffee cups. On a line all the way around here so that hopefully that prick of a bear comes back we can run him off so i don't know if this is the best idea we've ever had but it's the best best idea we have today and we're gonna see if it works at least that way we can peek out the tent and see if it's a bear or a wolverine or what it is the first day two days ago um we thought it was either wolves or wolverine no big tracks anywhere um, but last night it came back finished eating what scraps were kind of laying out still and then actually chewed on zach's caribou head um, went fishing south um, down the creek this afternoon and uh, there was bear tracks coming to camp and back down the creek to the south so i think the bear and it it's in the mud right where we've been crossing every day and they haven't been there so we're thinking we had a bear visitor last night so this is our bear plan we don't have a fence we have three coffee cups and guns i hope that works Furnish is sharpening the uh, camp axe. It's about a shit, it wouldn't even cut a branch. It's a uh, second day held over in the field. We're, we're getting kind of bored. Can't find any wolves to shoot. Can't catch any lake trout. Yeah, the fishing sucked. So we're filing an axe. Well, we're just crawling back in bed here. I don't know if we'll go back to sleep. Zach's over somewhere there. Yeah. But um, our bell system with coffee cups worked decently well. And uh, that prick of a bear came back. So fired a couple rounds in the air and yelled at him and seen him running off in the dark and went over and checked on our meat. And it... Uh, it's uh he tore it all out ate the back straps ate the ribs but the four quarters are like 90 percent good so we put them back rigged it back up fired a few more rounds at the bear well in the direction he ran off and hopefully that bastard stays away but i don't know how much more sleep we'll get so <laughs> crazy night you don't love having a bear that's close to camp no i'm just glad we couldn't see how big it was <laughs> <laughs> His tracks look pretty big. Yeah, you should see the peel out tracks. They're pretty <laughs> deep. It didn't like that 308. <laughs> all right, we're all packed up again, waiting on our float plane day three of trying to get out of the field. Um, we're three days overdue because of weather conditions, but as you can see today, it's pretty gorgeous out. Lake is awesome. This morning it was completely glass. There was no breeze at all. So just wrapping up, waiting for Mike to come pick us up. Crossing our fingers he makes it. He tried three days ago and couldn't make it apparently, or yesterday, I can't even remember now. It's all dragging together. Yesterday but... we got a call saying he was 20 miles out. Oh, and yeah. around. So yesterday he tried, had to turn around for weather, but trying again today. So we're ready to go. It's awesome up here, but um, since I shot my bull three days ago, we haven't seen an animal other than grizzly bears. So and Most of them have been in our camp. Yeah, and some of them have been in camp. So 
uh we're you know if we were seeing wolves or if the fishing was a little better we we're not doing real great on the fishing there's uh lakers in here and grayling we've caught some grayling but it's just been slow and not not enough to keep you entertained for days on end so if we were hearing or seeing wolves tried some calling you know, if we were able to do some of that, it'd be a little more entertaining, but being filled out and not even getting to look at caribou or anything else, we are ready to head home, get a shower, and get back to the family. So hopefully we will see everyone shortly and hear a plane coming over that horizon in the near future. Deuces.